Video games can be difficult and oftentimes hard to progress in them. That's why they invented cheats. What's up guys, Russ Lyman here and I'm going to break down my top 10 video game tips and tricks that I think every gamer should know. Let's get into the list. All right, we have to start this list off with Contra. Classic game for sure and I know everyone knows this code. The game you start off with three lives and it can be difficult to get through the entire game if you're not great at it so that's why they invented the konami code simply at the title screen press up up down down left right left right a b b a start and you'll start the game with 30 lives ready to take on the red falcon and defeat all the armies now, of course, this works for two player as well. You just need to add in select start and you'll both start the game with 30 lives. I think it's plenty for you able to complete Contra. Super Mario Brothers. Now, there's a few different codes and tricks in this that we can discuss. This one is in the first level. I think everyone should know this secret in the game. You grab your mushroom, you continue on, and when you get to the last warp pipe over here, there is a secret block that contains a extra life. Now, you could keep getting this in case you die in the level, so you're not losing lives, and you can get a little bit further and finally beat that first level. But I think everyone should know that that extra life is there. Now, continuing on with Super Mario Brothers, there is a way you can continue the game when you die. Now, once you perish with all your lives, hold down the A button, and when the title screen comes up, you hit start and you will begin at the last world that you had left off in. So I died in 4-1 and we are beginning again in 4-1. Now this always starts you at the beginning of that world. So if you do make it to 4-3 or 4-2 and die and you hold A and hit start, it's just going to bring you back to 4-1. So you'll have to start the world at the beginning. But this way you can continue on, get it all the way to world 8 and have your chance at beating Bowser. Now if we talked about Mario, of course we gotta talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. Playing this game was so fun as a kid. We do our best to try to get to the last level, but it was often very difficult. Well, lucky for us, they put in a level selection code in here. So at the title screen, you're gonna press up, down, left, right, A and start together, and it'll bring you to this screen right here, and you can choose any level, any level you want to play. So maybe you enjoyed the marble zone better, spring yard zone, you can go to any of those, try them as much as you need to to get better at them, or if you want, you could just go right to the final level and fight Robotnik, making it very easy to get to the end and beat the game. Maybe you got frustrated because you ran out of lives. It does start you with zero rings, so you need to do this run perfectly and not get hit by anything. But it's certainly doable, and you can see the end of Sonic the Hedgehog in less than five minutes. The Legend of Zelda. What a fantastic game. If you beat this as a kid, you found out you could start a second quest, but if you put your name as Zelda when you begin the game, you can start the second quest right away. Now, at first, you think nothing's different because you go to level one, it's exactly where it was and you're playing through, but all the other levels have switched spots, so it makes it a whole new adventure. Level two is now where you used to get the blue ring, and level three is one of the other levels, so it has a little bit more exploring in case you love that original Zelda and you want a little bit more out of it. You're used to playing the first quest. I definitely recommend going through the second quest at least one time because the classic is certainly awesome. We all remember where all the levels are and how to get everything. But to go through the second quest, not many people have done that. So give it a shot. Before we get to the number five spot, I'd like to thank this week's sponsor, The Weekly Warp Pipe, my podcast that comes out every Wednesday and Saturday. Be sure to check out theweeklywarppipe.com. 
All right, on to the next one. All right, coming back to Super Mario Brothers, the third one. I believe a ton of people remember tips and tricks from watching the movie The Wizard. They all showed you how to get the warp whistle right in this movie, which was great hype for the game because you got to see gameplay and a tip in that movie. But what they didn't show you was where to get the first warp whistle. You have to kneel down on this white block here and you'll fall through the background of the level. Now you're behind the bushes so you continue to finish the level and you'll find the treasure chest with the first warp whistle in it. So pretty unique that they have both warp whistles within the first four levels of the game essentially and if you use it right away on the screen it'll bring you to your warp zone here and if you use the whistle one more time you can actually start at world eight so you can get to world eight within three to four minutes of playing the game it's a little bit more difficult because you don't have all the extra power-ups that you normally would have playing through the game when you get to world eight but it's certainly doable to beat the game and a fun way to try other levels. Of course, this game has to make the list and that is Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. One of the most difficult games to beat and you're gonna need some help to beating Tyson. So they gave you a code to go directly to Tyson, typing in your pass key right here, 007-373-5963. And you can fight Tyson right away. Although I didn't get very far into the round because he is quite difficult. But this gives you the opportunity to practice over and over again in hopes of beating this game. It's fun to go through and get to them with all the fights, but if you need that extra practice, you're going to have to use the code to get Tyson down. Man, Metroid, what a game when this came out. The exploration in space, the sense of loneliness, finding power-ups, missiles, just exploring. It was a fantastic game. Enjoyed it playing it so much growing up. Now, when you finally beat the game, we all find out Samus is a lady. Depending how fast you beat it, you can see her without her helmet on. But if you want to start the game with the password... Justin Bailey, you will be able to start in Norfair with 255 missiles, six energy tanks, and you will see Samus without her power suit on. She's in this like pink leotard there, and she has green hair for some reason. But this is sweet, so it's a whole new look, and you got some power ups to start off with as well. So it's another way to play the game and just enjoy that classic Metroid. Now, there were rumors that Justin Bailey was a reference to just in her Bailey's, which was like bathing suit term or something like that. But they never really found out who Justin Bailey was. But if you were a kid in the 80s, you knew the name Justin Bailey and its significance with Metroid. Moving on to number two, we are talking NBA Jam for the arcade. This game certainly made cheats popular for the arcades. There were so many cheats for this game that you can input in. But I think the one that really stands out is Big Head Mode. Now, once you picked your team, you would hold up the turbo button and steal button until the tip off. And then your players would have large oversized heads, which was just so cool and added to this fun arcade feel that NBA GM already had. Now, this was ported to many different systems and they continued on with the codes and having the big heads. So cool to see. I love this and I remember it from the arcades just blowing my mind like, what is this? The players have large heads. So funny. And fun side fact, I actually got to meet Tim Critzrow, the voice of NBA Jam, a few times at conventions. Welcome to NBA Jam. Russ, what you doing on fire edition? 
Russ, what you doing? I don't know. Let's find out. All right, we have made it to the number one cheat, and that is for Mortal Kombat, The Blood Code. This game was awesome in the arcade, and when we got our console ports, they forgot one thing, to add the blood in here. There is nothing coming out. I know in the Super Nintendo, they had white that looked like sweat, but that that wasn't what we wanted, right? We wanted the blood and gore from the arcade. Now, they did have the fatalities, which look okay, but Sega Genesis released the blood code. If you hit A, B, A, C, A, B, B, you'll hear get over here. That unlocks the blood code, and you'll be able to see that blood pour out when you give them an uppercut or a kick to the face or a spear to the chest with Scorpion. And just that satisfaction of seeing the blood on there made this game that much better. I think if you ask any retro gamer about what cheats they remember, they're definitely going to say Mortal Kombat Blood Code. Doing this list brought back so many fond memories of growing up and using these codes just to get further in the video game so awesome that they're just imprinted in my mind up there and i'm sure the same goes for you if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave in the comments down below other top 10 videos you want to see me cover on the channel as always guys keep your world fun bit by bit